a little different video for me. I just wanted to talk about uh, pollution, conservation, uh, composting, and what I'm doing about it. Um, one of our major sources of groundwater pollution today is er over fertilizing and overuse of chemicals on urban lawns. Um, I've managed to have an acceptable looking lawn without using any chemical fertilizers, herbicides, or pesticides. And I've been doing it for 30 years. We've been living in this, at this location for 12 years and have uh, repeatedly been uh, maintaining our lawn with an annual treatment of compost. And I'd like to show you how we do it. Uh, we're easy, we're living on the eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains, pretty lucky. We're the first ones to use our river water. Uh, so I think it's pretty important that we don't pollute uh, the rivers for the people who use it downstream for us. Uh, and our annual composting treatment leaves us lawns that are resistant to weed infestation, uh, don't need uh, a lot of watering, and uh, enable us to do a, our small part to help uh, keep our groundwaters and river waters uh, clean. All of our yard waste and all of our household waste of a vegetable nature go into one of two compost bins. We don't put any household waste of, of an animal source into the bins, uh, just vegetable material. We keep the compost fairly moist, otherwise we don't have any special formula for, for using it. When time to use the compost, we simply lift the bin off the compost, um, shovel the pile into a wheelbarrow and sift it. For sifting we have a screen, um, three quarter by three quarter inch opening, stapled to a four by six frame. One end of the frame hangs from the upper deck and uh, I shake it from the other end. The uh, compost that goes through the screen gets used. If it doesn't go through the screen it goes back in the bin for another year. Each spring we have a commercial lawn service come and do a dethatching process, uh, commonly called power raking, but it really is um, breaking up all the loose thatch down near the surface uh, of the ground so that the uh, dead grass thatch can easily be raked up and collected. After, then we have the lawns aerated each spring with a commercial service punching holes in the lawn with an aerating machine. Some of our compost from the previous year is stored in a garbage bucket that we use during the summer as a rain barrel, but store sifted compost over the winter months. Um, so each spring, uh, our saved compost gets spread on our lawns um, into the wheelbarrow. And you can see the consistency of it is just like a nice loamy soil. Leaves and grass clippings are very precious. They make a wonderful soil supplement. So each spring we spread this homemade compost on our lawns.
and sp spread it with a uh, leaf rake. Don't have to worry about spreading it ter terribly uniformly, but uh, we use a leaf rake to, sp to spread the compost around her. Uh, so it's reasonably, reasonably thin. And don't leave any piles that will smother the grass. Two weeks later, we're ready to do some mowing. We do 90% of our mowing with a mulching mower, dedicated mulching mower. It does not, no provision for a bagging attachment. It has a toroidal deck, which does a really good job of mulching the grass clippings back down into the into it back down into the lawn. We have a second mower with a bagging attachment, uh, which I find essential for picking up rate leaves in the fall. Um, when we put the leaves directly into the compost bin, we find that they tend to mat and not compost well. But if we rake them into a windrow and then pick them up with our bagging mower, they condense somewhat and shred enough that they uh, compost much, much better. Same thing in the spring when we have the grass clippings, the dead grass clippings after the dethatching process, rake the uh, grass, dead grass into a windrow, pick it up with a lawnmower, it does sh shred it and, com and compact it so it composts much more easily. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.